Ever wondered how to unlock every drop of visual power in Unreal Engine 5? Whether you're crafting the next AAA game, a jaw-dropping cinematic, or simply pushing your PC to the absolute limits, today, I'm going to show you how to crank those settings up to the max for that jaw-dropping, next-gen look. Let's move directly to my project and start with Movie Render Queue settings. In case you don't see Movie Render Queue, you can do it by simply clicking on Edit and Plugins. Search for Movie Render Queue in search bar, enable the plugin and restart Unreal Engine. Once Movie Render Queue is opened, click on Unsaved Config. Once it's opened, I will delete default settings and then click on plus setting button to add settings to your Movie Render Queue Config. Add anti-aliasing, color output, game overrides and I like to add PNG and EXR both of them in my render to check if my frames are rendered correctly. You're free to choose one of them. Choose EXR for highest quality. And now let's add deferred rendering and enable first option in deferred rendering if you want to render alpha channel. Now let's add console variables. This is the most important thing for my renders. Some Unreal Engine creators may say the console variables don't make any difference, but for me they make really huge change in my renders. So first we have to change anti-aliasing settings. For spatial sample count set it to 4 and for temporal sample count set it to 8. I use this sample count for all of my renders, and don't forget to tick override anti-aliasing. But you can use 1 for spatial sample count and 32 for temporal sample count, these are the value I noticed most of the creators using for anti-aliasing. And for warm-up frames I use 64 for both. Warm-up frames in the Unreal Engine Movie Render queue are extra frames rendered before your actual sequence starts. They allow effects like lighting, shadows, and anti-aliasing to stabilize, ensuring the final output looks smooth and artifact-free. Next setting is color output. If you want you can just disable the tone curve and do color grading inside your favorite video editing software like DaVinci Resolve or After Effects. But I prefer to use color output so just enable it. I will make a folder name with OCIO and name the file anything to your liking. I will name the file color output so I can remember why I made it, and now just double click on the icon to open the setting of OCO, and there are two type of color spaces you can add here, first one work for renders, the second one help you to use color output in your viewport. Click plus icon twice and then click on drop down icon to add linear recording 709, you may know this color space, it's universal for most of the softwares for better colors. And on the second slot add ACESCG. And for display color space click on plus icon only once, and choose Rec 709 SDR video preset. Now click on save icon and close OCO setting, and then click on drop down button for transform source and choose recording 709. For transform destination select ACESCG. And now let's move to console variables, the final step of render settings. Let's click plus icon to add slots for console variables. I will add at least 20 console variables for now, we'll add more if we need more of them. I have a text file of all the console variables I use for my render, I will provide two text files link in description of my video. One will be simple just to copy and paste to the Unreal Engine, and second one will have explanation of specific console variable for you to decide if you need that console variable or not. So for the first command I will add R, dot screen percentage and I will set its value to 125. Choose value according to your PC specifications, going above 150 will slow your renders drastically. Now I will just copy and paste all the console variables one by one, I won't explain what they those variables do, because it will make my video longer, it's good for my channel to gain watch hours, but I prefer not to waste time of my fellow creators. So I will attach that text file which is better option for all of you to understand and choose correct console variables. The last console variable isn't useful in my opinion, since it just set your FPS, which you can do it in sequencer or in output setting anytime. So totally up to you to use it or ignore it. Game overrides actually allow you to disable game related limits like frame rate caps, vsync, or performance focus settings. This ensures your render focuses solely on visual fidelity, delivering the best possible image quality for your cinematic renders. 
leave game overrides on default, they're perfect. Output settings are totally up to you guys. Change file location and set resolution or custom frames for animation, you can change all of them in output settings. Since the render settings process is so long you can save it as preset and you can use same preset in all of your projects. Just copy you asset file for project content folder to another project's content folder. I'm attaching the render to show you difference. Moving to the final step and most important step if you used color output, now we gonna import our render to After Effects and we will fix the render if it's looking darker. Follow these simple steps. After rendering our scene, I opened After Effects and we will import our frames here. Double click on Media Panel and select First Frame and After Effects will load the whole sequence of animation into our project. Now you can make new composition and then drag all frames into timeline, or be lazy like me and just drag the sequence to timeline to create composition by itself. After importing the animation in After Effects, it's not looking the way it was in Unreal Engine. To fix that, click on button called 8BPC and the new window will appear. On this window, we have to change color settings according to our render. After changing the color space from Adobe to OCIO the scene got darker, first thing we have to change is bit depth, it's set to 8-bit for default, change it to 32-bit float, before changing the working color space, we gotta change OCIO configuration to ACES 1.3, then I will select ACESCG for working color space. For display color space I'm setting it to Rec 709, and then we can click OK button and our viewport will be fixed. Now for rendering process, add your animation to render queue and then double click on output module. You can change main options according to your needs, I'm just gonna show color settings to you. Now just tick show all button and select sRGB display faces SDR video or recording 709. I use recording 709 for all of my renders and you should be using it too. In case you face any problems while rendering, feel free to ask me in comment section or join my Discord server and DM me.